kids that come to this gym are mainly inner city kids that come from usually single mom homes or a lot of times hard working homes but they're a lower income. I first met Jessica, she came in with her brother and she wanted to box. I remember being in school and like just being so anxious. I just wanted class to end already. I wanted to like run to the bus because I wanted to get here already so badly. Like I just wanted to come and hit the bag. You can tell right off the bat that she was kind of be good for this sport because she was a little rough around the edges, which is, you know, good for boxing because we take that anger or whatever they have and teach them how to channel it, you know, in the ring with discipline. I really liked sparring. I liked that feeling of, I'm gonna get in the ring. I'm gonna hit somebody in the face. <laughs> I actually enjoy getting hit. I mean, I like hitting people. I like thinking about the combination I'm gonna make and actually landing it. The part of it is, is hurting you, because I'm gonna break you. That's the point. My brother Gabriel motivates me a lot. He was 24 years old. He passed away in August. They don't tell us what happened. They tell us that he either got hit by a car or he fell off his skateboard. My brother was in the hospital for a couple of days. Um, I didn't sleep any of those days. I tried being with him as much as I could. The doctors basically told me there, there was nothing they could do. He was brain dead. He's not ever going to wake up. And um, my brother was an organ donor. Um, he saved more than seven lives. He's a hero. A week after my brother passed away, I was already in the gym. I just had to come back. I needed something for me because I was about to go crazy. It was a very depressing phase. You could tell right off the bat that Jessica was really depressed about the incident because she wasn't communicating with anybody. She, she didn't have any emotion of anything. I just kind of wanted to be alone, you know? I wanted to do everything right. I wanted to do what he wanted to do and he wasn't able to. Jessica would tell me, you know what? I'm going to win this fight. I'm going to win it for my brother. My brother's going to be proud of me. He wanted to go to college and he wanted to work and he wanted to have a family and he, you know what I mean? I mean, I want to work, I want to go to school. I want to have what he wasn't able to have. I could see, and I've talked to Jessica, and I could see in her face that a lot of times that she wanted to quit, she wanted to give up. She was having problems and difficulties, but she stuck it out. The gym has honestly always been here for me. And more than just in the ring, outside, in the real world. Relationships that form in this gym overall, I think, is probably the, the best part of this gym. We actually do become more of a family because it's not just about boxing. We do a lot of other things together. There's this girl named Jasmine. She's my sparring partner. I love her with all my heart. We could talk about anything and like our problems in, in life. So we became from strangers to sisters now throw from the outside, okay? So you gotta do two, three jabs and force her backwards. She's just gonna go straight back. I can best describe my relationship with Jessica as almost like a, like a father-daughter type situation. He's always helped me. He's always been there for me. If I need something, I know I can count on him. I offered to take her home one day because um, she would walk and take the trolley. So I told her from now on, since she was living downtown and I live in that direction, I told her I would just drop her off. When I would drop her off, she would tell me that I couldn't park directly in front of the building, and, you know, so I kind of got suspicious there was something going on. Obviously, when you say you're living downtown with all the new condos, you think, well, she's living in an expensive condo, but it was a shelter. 
I've been living in shelters for about three years now. We lost our house when I was 14, 15. When we got the eviction notice, it was so like surreal. Like I couldn't believe it was, you know? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to do. Kind of just thought we were gonna go get another apartment, but it didn't really work that way. My first night at St. Vincent de Paul. I remember getting up in the middle of the night and having to use the bathroom and I had to like walk down a hallway and make a right, walk down that hallway, make a left, you know? And um, I was trying to think of it as a hotel, but it wasn't a hotel. It was way different. Hearing about her situation downtown and like in shelters and you know about her family, it didn't, it didn't really change my, my thoughts about her, but I had, I, even though I have respect for Jessica, I gave her like props, you know? I just think she's a really strong girl for going through all the things that she's been through and she's still maintaining to go to school, work, and to go to the gym. Well, that little girl's a champion right now and, and I just can't wait to see her graduate from a university because then she can say she's been through it all and she's made it and then she can go back and look, tell the other kids, hey, guess what, it's not that hard. Even though that what she's gone through is, is I would say it's pretty tough. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. One day I'll have my life settled, I'll have my job, I'll have my car, I'll have my house. I mean, you just gotta keep pushing for that day because until that day, it's, it's gonna be really hard. I think I've sacrificed a lot to get where I'm at now and I'm not even halfway there, but I'll get there. Smile.